Good day, fellow investors. Let's analyze JD.com, the online retailer in China that many think is the Chinese Amazon, but then on the other hand, others say that it will never reach Amazon's potential growth because it doesn't invest that much into technology. So we are going to go through my three years of notes on JD's conference calls to get really a good vision on what the management is doing, how are they delivering on their promises and what is the real potential for the stock? Is it the next Amazon or not? Then we're going to dig through the most important issues that b bother the stock at the moment and develop an investment strategy for the long term to see how to position yourself or how to position JD in your portfolio. At the end, you should have a good comprehensive objective overview of the risk reward when investing with JD. These are the key pillars to look at when looking at JD. Also the key pillars, but also what we're going to discuss today, competition with Alibaba, collaboration with others, Tencent, WeChat, growth, how it is slowing down, but still strong, online to offline, offline strategy, the technology, automated delivery, etc., margins, What's the possibility of improving those margins, of, make them, of making them sustainable, strong over time? My earnings models, growth rates, target prices, value, present values for the stock, the bear thesis, the short thesis, JPM, and, and uh, Asian analysts, what are they saying? Investment strategy, my approach to JD and other Chinese stocks, and then comparison, a short model comparison to Alibaba. So let's start by going through an overview of JD by discussing what has the management said during the last three years of the conference call notes that I love to listen because then you really get a feeling about the company, the stock and what the management is doing. So from 2015, it's very interesting that they closed the C2C platform PyPy that they bought from Tencent due to too much trouble with counterfeit items. And this also shows JD's strategies. They are reinvesting and they will see what will they be able to leverage on their platform or not. So nothing, not everything will be a win. There will be misses, but we'll see how much will that influence the company. They also invested in BitAuto with Tencent, 1 billion, and that also didn't develop that well, then they have investments with Google, Walmart for the global expansion, but also they invested into Walmart's part there in China. They bought them out, paid in equity. Walmart insisted to get the equity. So that was very interesting. They are now have invested in Farfetch, the online luxury global retail is going to be listed, I think, today or tomorrow. So another investment where JD has collaboration with then they say that they will open 1000 convenience store, 1000 of them per day in order to reach 1 million convenience store as they spread around China. Not much of that is going on as the model probably hasn't yet taken traction, but it is something the management is thinking. However, be careful with the promises because those promises were made a long time ago and nothing yet has happened there. Also, they are targeting the same customer that Alibaba has. So given there is a competitor in the market with a larger user base, they think it will be easier to grow as Alibaba teaches consumers to use and buy online. Their quarter, they have 266 million active customers, very valuable middle class and upper middle class customers. So there are a lot of buzzwords, 1 million sh shops in China, global strategy, global growth, uh, profitability with their logistics. But I have been hearing those buzzwords for already a while. This doesn't mean JD is bad or missing. We have just to put things into perspective and be objective. Let's dig deeper. Let's dig into the growth. So the key point for the growth strategy is combination offline online and they want to get to the market leadership position to grow margin because of economies of scale. So the key drivers of growth are technology, ticket size and talent. However, the growth has been slowing down. Now it is expected to be between 25% and 30%. 2015, it was above 40%. So it's really slowing down. And they have had some issues already in July from the conference call, but they are happy that it, it is getting better in August. We will see how will that reflect Q3 earnings. 
Just a note on the growth, they have started and invested a lot in the apparel business, but Alibaba simply shut them down. They told the merchants that if they want to be on Alibaba, they can't be on JD. And a lot of them simply switched to Alibaba. And uh, you might say it's unfair, you might say it's fair, but really Alibaba is the dominant player and JD is gaining market share, is gaining traction, but it's not that easy. So Alibaba is the Amazon, not JD. That's something we have to accept objectively. Let's see further what is the potential for JD and the key is by looking at the margins, but before that let's look about the technology. So JD has said that they will have drones for their delivery, here we have one, here we have another one, drones technology investment etc etc. Oh these are from ZTO and Alibaba. So when you hear another buzzword technology, artificial intelligence, uh, big data. And when you hear those buzzwords in China, every company is investing in that, everybody. So it's not a competitive advantage, it's a competitive must where you have to invest, where you have to have it. Without that, you are dead in China. So don't think and th this is so cool. Everybody has it, everybody is doing it and everybody can copy the other people in a second. So that's China and accept it. Forget about competitive advantages. So let's talk about margins. Simply go to the conference call. This is a transcript. So they don't give on the short term, but the Sydney Huang from JD says, I think medium to long term comparing their margins with other offline retailers, their margin is still lagging behind on average roughly 10 plus percent. So that's the opportunity. Then on the expense line, they hope to scale everything and bring the JD Mall expense ratio to the top of online retailers in China because they can do things more efficiently than their competitors. And then the goal is for the management to first party net margin should be at least similar to the best offline retailers, which traditionally ranging from three to five percent. If you consider the more competitive environment, you'll take a haircut, you'll still get 2% to 4%. And then on top of that, you have the marketplace business, which has good benchmark in China. So the management targets, if you listen to the conference calls, they're always saying long-term, long-term, we will reach 2 to 4% net margins. But they are not reaching that and they are constantly investing to keep the net margins close to zero, negative 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5 was the maximum when the stock price was exploding and then again down. So a very, very tough, highly competitive environment with razor thin margins. That's extremely important to understand. JD is a retailer, online retailer with razor thin margins because the competitive environment is very tough. And the question is, when will the management reach those targets of 2-3% net margins that will make the company sustainably profitable? Because they are promising that their goal is not short-term margins, they are sacrificing those in order to reach long-term constant growth with margins by being the leader in a sector, leading in the environment so that they can keep the margins higher. For now it's not succeeding because others are also playing the same game, but Alibaba is having better margins. So something to keep in mind. What scares investors? It's the non-linearity. So as they say, if there is an excess in margins, we might put the excess return back into the business. So lower the margins to pursue future growth. The goal is to make sure that margins will increase steadily over a very, very long period of time. And this hasn't happened lately over the last few quarters. There have, has been a slow, constant increase in margins for the past three years, 0.5% per year. And then in the last few quarters, the management said, oh, we're going to postpone the growth, the profitability for later. And that's what really crashed the stock because investors get scary and they see, okay, if they postpone it for later, when and is it ever going to come? Because that promise of constantly increasing sustainable margin has been broken by the management. Further, if you look about logistics, everybody says that they have the best logistics in the market. But if you look at what the management is saying, they firmly believe that JD Log Logistics will transform from a cost center to a profit center over the next few years. 
So all the other logistics are very profitable. I made a video on ZTO Express, but JD isn't yet and everybody is investing, everybody is competing. So when will they become profitable? The management was announcing that they will be profitable from day one, which isn't the case at the moment. So that's another thing to think about. They are expanding. They have increased their warehouses from, I don't know, 2.5 million square meters to 12, 10, 12 million square meters. They have been opening warehouses one a day over the past year. So it's amazing what they are doing. The question is, when will they be able to scale that? And that's always, okay, when we go to margins, when we go to competition, razor fin, how will they, when will they able, be able to monetize that? The management isn't giving any guidance and that's what's scaring the market. But there is some, it's something to keep in mind because I think that somewhere in the future, they will manage to reach those margins and that will be your return if you are investing in JD. But more about that in the later part of the video when we discuss the strategy. Further, there's something important, hidden value. They have over 2.5 million square meters of logistic properties that they actually bought at a very low price they are getting from the government. So they can sell the, those, lease them back and get a lot of value unlocking from the balance sheet because it's low value on the balance sheet because they buy it for cheap. Now, let's discuss the margins and put them into an earnings model. So the target margins, two to 4% net margin. So that's something I have to put on the revenue, put revenue growth between, I don't know, 15 in a bad case, 25, 30% in a good case, put it in an earnings model and see what comes out. But the problem is I'm already estimating 3% net margin or 2% you'll see in the model. If that doesn't happen, then everything falls apart for JD. So the key is that the management has first to deliver on the margins and then we can estimate the value of JD from that perspective. So the revenue is $61 billion, growth 25% per year, let's assume over the next five years. Earnings at 2018 at 3% net margin would be 1.83 billion. Number of shares outstanding 1.5 billion, earnings per share at 3% margin would be 1.26. So I'll be using a 3% margin to start with because that is what the management expects and probably they will hit it somewhere in the future. And that's the key to watch as an exit strategy from JD because then you can put it in a model and see, okay, what's the buying price, what's the selling price. So if there is growth at 25% per year over the next five years and we put the price earnings ratio of 15 on 2023, earnings, I expect a 15% yearly return from investing anywhere and especially in China now. Therefore, the discount rate at 15, I get that the stock is undervalued. From that perspective, the present value is 28 and the current stock price is 25. This should deliver a 15% return if the management hits the 3% net margin. Somewhere they will. If there is a slowdown in China due to trade wars, economy, whatever, let's say JD gets to 15% growth rate and we slash the price earnings ratio to 10, which is not unusual for Chinese companies, the stock is severely overvalued. The present value is 12.60 compared to the current stock price. To be fairly valued at $25, which is the current stock price, the company has to first reach the 3% net margin, then grow at 22% per year over the next five years and have a PE ratio of 15 in 2023. So the question is, will the management hit those margins? What will be the valuations? Given the non-linearity in margins, I think that they will hit it somewhere, sometimes, but it will not be sustainable. But from an investing perspective, you have to buy on the bad and then sell on the good news. Let's see the bad, let's see the bear thesis to see, to know a little bit more about JD and that it isn't such a long-term powerful investment, but can really be a buy cheap, sell high play. So first, JD sinks after getting its most bearish target on Wall Street from JP Morgan. JPM slash target from 37 to 25 on the back of slowing gross merchandise value growth, lighter margins and accelerated investments. 
However, JPM is really slashing here on the short term because that's what the company said. We're going to increase investments, lower margins for a while in order to improve margins later. So typical analyst behavior, they slash the price after the stock has fallen. That's, I hate that analyst behavior. But that's JPM. Let's go into a better bear thesis from an Asian analyst, from an Asian hedge fund manager that really trashes the business model of JD. Something to keep in mind before investing. So smoke and mirrors, the JD.com story. This was 30th May of 2018. JD had 20 buys, eight holds and just one sell, probably his sell. So his conclusion is that there is nothing magic, magical nor differentiated about its business franchise to suggest it will be able to make a profit in the next five years and justify the current market cap. The huge amounts of capital raised have been recklessly deployed. Management actions do not suggest that they believe in the success of their own company. Let's see what is that discussion about. If we look at the prices of uh, electronics, which is the most sold item on JD, we can see that other competitors are there in the price. So it's all about logistics and same day delivery. But the Chinese consumer is really worried and focused on prices. So it's not an easy environment to compete in. So JD doesn't have a pricing environment and prices are already higher than on other platforms. So that's one issue. Further on the capital raised, JD raised uh, almost 11 billion in capital since the IPO since 2014. So that's a lot of money. But their capital has been recklessly deployed, PyPy acquisition, BitAuto acquisition, impairments, 1 billion there. The Walmart acquisition paid a lot in equity, but will that be impaired too? We will see. So a year later than the announced, there has been no JD convenience store yet. When JD Logistics was spun off, Richard Liu said that it would be profitable from day one and will seek a separate listing. That didn't, didn't come, so it's still a cost. Uh, JD has told investors that they are the Amazon plus Walmart and hence its potential has been unappreciated. The thesis is that Amazon has Amazon Web Services, Prime, Alexa, Amazon Go, Kindle, Media, Video, whilst JD has none of those. This just to difference between investments, property, plant and equipment with Amazon 50 billion with a cumulative depreciation of 20 billion versus JD 1.9 billion and 160 million already depreciated. So we have the bull thesis and the bear thesis. Bull thesis, I think both will be right. The JD model isn't sustainable in the long term. Can you make money by investing in JD? Yes because they will hit those margins at some point in time. They will do something just to improve the stock price, maybe issue new shares, get new capital, because it's a very, very highly competitive environment. Whatever they do, Alibaba is a step ahead of them and they are really competing in a highly razor thin margin environment. So there is value, they are building value, their network has value, which means that the stock will be very volatile. So you have to put things into perspective from an investing strategy. How am I going to approach investing in JD if I want that to be my exposure to China? So my strategy is I'm looking at the complete Chinese stock market. JD will go on my watch list for now. I'm not going to buy now because I'm still comparing with other hundreds of companies that I'm analyzing in China. That's what I'm doing for my stock market research platform. So, so every day I analyze one or two stocks and then add one or two days for the in-depth analysis. And what I see that JD, when I put that into comparison, is a good potential investment, but doesn't have really the margin of safety that I'm looking for yet. At a lower price, it might have. However, it might spike to 70 in the next few years. So if you want to invest in that, be sure to have a strategy. Okay, what if it goes to 20? What do I do? What if it goes to 15? What it if it goes to 10 and then spikes back, be ready to make volatility your friend. That's the best way to invest in JD and in many other Chinese companies. So if they manage to get an average net profit margin of just 2%, then the earnings are slashed down at the price earnings ratio of 15, we get 
a target price of 16 a fair value. So that makes JD extremely overvalued. Add a valuation of 10 that many extremely profitable Chinese companies have and you get to a present value of just 11 for the stock. So a fair value, low range of 11. The stock is already down 50%, it might go again 50% down given the volatility in the Chinese market and everything going on with the mumbo jumbo trade war. So compare the risks that similar Chinese stocks offer, see at what point JD is overvalued, undervalued. Here a comparison with Alibaba that if Alibaba grows at 30% at a price earnings ratio of 15, then the stock price is undervalued. The present value is similar to the current present value. JD has been growing lately at 30%, Alibaba at 60%. So Alibaba is really exploding globally, is the market leader. So you might want to see how that fits your portfolio. On the portfolio investment strategy in China, I think the exposure has to be between 10% when things are good in China and 30% when things are bad in China. Because whether we like it or not, China will be the dominant economy in the next few decades. So you have to have a portfolio exposure, but be sure to manage it carefully by buying low and selling high, not doing the other way around. 2007, it was high. 2009, 10, it was cheap. Then it was high in 2014, 2016, it was again cheap. And now it's getting again cheap again. So exposure should be increased, but carefully select which stocks you are going to invest in. I'm going to compare JD as I, you have seen on the table with many other companies. And then I'm going to decide, okay, what will be my exposure to China? On the positive side, and I think it will happen, if JD grows at 22% and I attach a valuation ratio of 20 on a profit margin of three, which when JD hits that 3% net profit margin will create extremely positive market sentiment, the present value of the stock is at 33 and the stock price in 2023 is 68. So if you invest now in 25, you can expect somewhere in the next five years that the stock price hits 50, 60, 70. And that's an investment strategy. However, you have to be open for the downside. Nobody knows when will the management hit those margins. That's the key, that's the key to watch. But the only way to invest in JD is accept the volatility, make volatility your friend. It's the second player in the market, it has value. J um, Walmart, Google are invested there. It's expanding, it's growing. The margins will be volatile, non-linear. So you have to expect extreme volatility because as you see, analysts don't like volatility, don't know how to model volatility. So that's something you have to be ready for when investing in JD. Will the stock go to 50, 60? probably in the next five years. So that's a positive. Will the stock go to 20? Will the stock go to 12? I don't know, but given the sentiment in China, if there is slowdown in the economy, if there is more trade wars, if there is more selling, it can go to 12. So that's the range you have to keep in mind when investing in JD. Will JD go bankrupt, positive cash flows, I don't see bankruptcy or similar issues. Will they leverage on the logistics? But yes, but they will have extreme competition. Razor thin mar margins industry. That's something to keep in mind. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to your comments. I'll see you on Friday after the US market stock closes with the long-term fundamental stock market news. See you in the next video.